back to back turns wins. That was eyes. That was so good for us. That was so good. Not enough rank. Not enough. Hello, rank. good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. And thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. Milky Smooth version 9.6. Version 9 was leaked into my Discord while I was working on it. And this is the final version, you know, sealed, put into the sleeves, locked away into the cabinet for the rest of eternity. This is an absolute banger. And uh, I used it to push from Platinum 4 to Mythic Rank number 4 in, oh, I don't know, like 10 hours, uh, 12 hours, somewhere in here. It's hard to track, but uh, it was pretty easy. We have a, an amazing win rate as well. And uh, so we're breaking down the deck list for you guys, talking about the changes to the deck, why we've made them and why we think they're a good choice, really trying to justify our decisions here. And then we'll demonstrate all of that in the gameplay footage to try to convince you as well. And then we'll wrap up with my final thoughts and deck review after that. We'll also break down the current meta game, what I experienced on my way into Mythic. So you guys know what to look out for on your way. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video to show your support. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more great content like this. And there's a link tree link in the description below for all of the latest and greatest. Let's take a look at Milky Smooth version 9.6. You know, it's pretty sad that I couldn't use uh, version 6.9 because we're already past that point. So this is as close as I could get. And then uh, let me open up this really quick because we should look first at the deck stats as a whole. And here we have our MTG Arena Assistant. This is available for free to everyone within my link tree link. It's something uh, that I use every single day. It's great. So we're looking at Milky Smooth version 9.6. We have a win rate of 66%. We're falling a little bit shy there, but hopefully in the end of the season, we can bump that up uh, by an additional 3%. On the play, we're absolutely uh, unstoppable, which you'd, you'd assume as an aggro deck on the play, you're gonna have an inherent advantage. And then on the draw, we're holding our own, which is really cool at 50%. Uh, look at our win rate here. You know, <laughs> it's really hard to get a stable win rate until you get the, you know, a majority of data points, which we have accumulated, which is quite nice. And then our total matchups, we had five games against uh, Mono Blue in which we won every single game, which is really cool. Uh, six games against Orzhov, uh, the blood money deck, which I think we've got a really good advantage over as well, an 83% win right here. 14 games against Boros aggro slash life gain. <sighs> Be careful what kind of content you put out, HGG, because you're gonna have to deal with it in the coming days. So this is a very aggressive deck. Angel Fire Ignition is so freaking good. Moving on, Mono White. We do have a 57% win rate over the other mono white deck, so I think it's safe to assume this is the best version. <laughs> uh, we've got seven matches against Is It Turns, and we've got a 57% win rate here, and that's very important because one of the most annoying decks in the meta, you don't want to be losing uh, against that a lot. And that's kind of the majority of our matchups. Lots of mono blue. Well, I shouldn't say, okay, lots of Boros, lots of mono white. And then, you know, a fair amount of Is It Turns, Mono Blue, and then even a, uh, a fair amount of Mono Green as well, which we went 50-50 uh, with, because Mono Green, oh, such a good deck. Those Blizzard Brawls, they'll get you, right? Uh, so that's kind of what we have going on for stats within our push to Mythic uh, this season. Now what you guys all wanted is the deck list. First off, if you're unfamiliar, this is a 60 card standard deck. Uh, designed for best of one play. It has an average mana value of 2.3, making it very quick. We have 36 creatures and zero non-creatures because I don't care about non-creatures. I just want to attack and I want to attack fast and consistently. We have 24 lands in deck for consistency's sake because you know what I hate? I absolutely hate bricking and uh, you know this just helps avoid it. There's uh, worse things than drawing a land like not drawing uh, a land, <laughs> right? So that's kind of what we have going on here. Of course, really relying on that Faceless Haven as a creature-based land. And this is receiving uh, an adjustment or a quote-unquote nerf within the new Alchemy set, which is really cool. It's going to be a 3-3, which I don't really think is going to slow us down. With that being said, uh, the new cards in deck, Allenbach Escort, a 1-1 with Vigilance. We can sacrifice it at instant speed, just like the Selfless Savior, 
to give target creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it, lifelink and indestructible until the end of turn. The lifelink is nice if you're in an aggro mirror match of some sorts uh, to gain that extra turn because every amount of life that you gain gives you basically an extra turn to swing in on theirs, which is really cool, right? So uh, think of it this way and the indestructible, that's very important. Uh, the plus one plus one counters can kind of hold you up, but it's really easy uh, to put them on anything you want with the Luminarch Aspirant. And uh, this is a 1 1 at the beginning of combat on your turn. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. This will also receive, uh, you know, a balance in case uh, you're unfamiliar with the new up and coming alchemy set. I do have a video on that. Check it out. And uh, these plus one counters will come out uh, on your end step, uh, not at the beginning of your combat. So a little bit of a, a different feel there. Uh, other new cards, though, we do have uh, Thalia, Guardian of Thabran. Uh, I know my pronunciation is just brutal. Oh, forgive me. It's a 2-1 with first strike, non-creature spells. You uh, opponents uh, cast, actually, not even just your opponents, everybody. And uh, it doesn't matter, though, because we don't have any non-creature spells. So you're going to tax everything that's a non-creature spell by one. This is very, very good against those is it turns. And uh, yeah, that's kind of all we have for the deck that's new. We're filling around that in a different way than before, though. We have a ton of exile in the deck using the skyclave apparitions on three using the brutal cathars on three to take out our opponent's creatures opening up our attacking lanes uh for the creatures that are on the ground right uh there's a few of them uh, but primarily our damage gets dealt in the air we have elite spellbinder in the air we have redain in the air and then we have the legion angels in the air as well uh which is really cool so um you know the elite spellbinder can also tax when it enters the battlefield, look at their hand, which is good because then you know what you're dealing with for your upcoming turns, and then pick the threat, probably the field wipe or any interaction they have, uh, reach, something like this, removal, and then they'll have to pay two more to do it. So Thalia can tax, Binder can tax, Redain can tax, which is really nice. So if it's against a, a deck that's focused on interaction, definitely those are your priority. If it's a deck focused on creature spells, your priority kind of shifts, right? You have Luminarch Aspirant, so you can get larger than their creatures. You have the Brutal Cathar and the Skyclave Apparition, so you can take away their creatures, right? So there's the two kind of different strategies uh, for the different builds. And of course, they both include the Legion Angel to get out on top and just smash in, right? Early game uh, attackers through Usher of the Fallen. Uh, really nice. Usher links up with the Adeline Resplendent Cathar quite nicely because when you attack, uh, Adeline is uh, powers equal to the number of creatures that you control. And when you attack, you can boast through the Usher for an additional two mana to make an additional creature, which would inherently push up Adeline by one, which is really cool. So that's a way uh, to gain extra damage there, which is really nice. Of course, the Intrepid Adversary, uh, Adversary, sorry, for two. Pay an additional two each time you want uh, until you're out of mana. Put that many Valor counters and creatures you control will get a plus one, plus one for each Valor counter, uh, which you guys already know this stuff, right? So I feel like I'm being a little bit redundant here. Uh, Adeline attacks, makes the token to attack as well, or uh, a creature attacks with Adeline in play is what I should say. She doesn't herself have to attack. You can attack with a flyer, make that token. And typically, you want to do this in every matchup except the mirror matchup. The mirror matchup, your opponent can play, if they have it, uh, Intrepid. They can push the extra mana into it. Now it's a 4-2. And when that 1-1 one, one token attacks in, they can chump block it. Their creature will survive, gain the life, and that can potentially be bad for you. Even though, um, you know, you can get that token up to two yourself and then it's not a problem anymore, get it up to three. So you do just kind of have to balance that and make sure that your tokens are bigger than their uh, adversus adversary. <laughs> and uh, you're going to be good to go. So this is the newest version. Sideboard's just the angels because you're playing, uh, you're pulling one from your sideboard to your hand whenever you play it. And uh, Redain, four or greater, two more to cast. Snow is in tap. We know this. The shield reduces damage to us and permanents we control by one. And whenever we're the target of a spell or an ability, uh, we'll counter that unless they pay one as well. So typically go for Redain first. Uh, and then once you have that in play, if you pull a second copy, play the shield, stuff like that, right? So I think we've covered everything uh, fairly in depth. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, maybe one thing we've not mentioned is the Cathar. You can cast the Cathar, get an exile, uh, exile tokens. And then if they deal with your Cathar, there's no token to get back. That's great, uh, really nice priority here. And then let it change to nighttime and double cast on it yourself 
um, using the tokens to protect it, right? So the Luminarch Aspirant puts the plus one, plus one counters on the Brutal Cathar when the Escort is in play, and now you quit casting. It goes to Knight, now you double cast. If they try to remove it, boom, you have Indestructible, and you just really control the field. They have no blockers. We can attack with everything, which is really cool. So uh, I know I said I mentioned everything, but we missed that last second. That is indeed the entire breakdown of Milky Smooth 9.6. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I hope you have good luck crushing some of those is it turns uh you know my thoughts on this deck and the meta in our wrap-up thoughts after the gameplay but i don't want to get into that yet because it's going to go on for a bit so enjoy the gameplay and we'll be back to wrap up after that on the draw we just had a casual three and a half minute wait time for this first match very cool beans mono black really beats up mono white effectively so i'm nervous it gets us good Rakdos in the house. That's the addition of red. Which is pretty cool. Let's push up ourselves. No attack. And turn. We need their mana to be, ta to be tapped. And then we need to transfer these tokens to the Cathar. I think we're good. Take Magda. Counters over here, no attacks. And turn, so now we've got indestructible. <laughs> indestructible does not protect against minus effects, so that was uh that was really good. That was a good play. We were just about to take over. We had it all figured out. Uh, outpacing their hook every turn with counters. But now, things looking a little bit scarier. We just take what we can get when we can get it. Oh, no. I think that's game. Let's see what that last card is. Oh, nice draw. Let's double tax it. Not like it matters. And, um, yeah, we're getting hit for eight here as a minimum. And they may even just, uh, slay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's not good. Again, eight damage coming in. Down to 11. This really hurts. We just need the life gain, and we're getting hit for nine here. Uh, we may as well attack. We're not defending because they have flying. And that is game. I can see before you beat me. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a that was a nice, nice, nice crippling fear. Um, you know, we're thinking about the hook outpacing it, but uh, yeah, the fear is better at four than the hook is because at four the hook only does two. Um, yeah. Dang. After another casual three minute wait in the queue, we have a match. Sure of the Fallen in play. Dahlia and then Redain. They could be a Leer deck, so this might be fun, but we're going to have to dodge some of this removal. Not casting anything other than a Fading Hope. Oh, Creature Zombies. Um, it's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool man. They are using Snow-Covered uh, lands. And I would kill Jadar. I would take Jadar out if I could. I would trade with the Usher. I think that's fine. It's a 1-1 one, one for a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because now the zombie is not going to come back every turn. Uh, that can kill Thalia. I don't like that at all. We just get it over with, though.
Let's play it safe. What's in your hand? What do I need to worry about? <clears throat> get that out of here. You get that out of here! Let's hit for two. Keep Thalia up. Force them to sacrifice it somehow. Like, now they're gassed. Kind of sucks. But if we can just do air damage, we'll be fine. And not playing Adeline, because Adeline kills Thalia and their tax is down. But at the same time, they're bricking anyway, so let's just rip. Let's just rip, baby. Good game. They don't like that. And I get it, they're bricking, so let's move on. We gained a whole two ranks there. And now we get to sit in the queue for another five minutes. <laughs> on the draw, hand looks nice. Oh, just another three minute queue to get into a match. This has taken a lot out of me. Typically, my matches aren't even three minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, today's video might be a little bit shorter than you're used to. But uh, we're going to break down the deck as in-depth as we possibly can. We got to take that trade, man. They do get the 1-1 out of it. No! So they're dropping... Valia. Now that's fine. I don't really care. We need to find our Brutal Cathars. We need to Cathar it up. Oh! Uh, so I don't want to Cathar the Skyclave. You always want to Skyclave a Skyclave. And Skyclave a Cathar, for that sake, right? No attacks with it, but then we're dumping in, you know, Intrepid for two, Intrepid for two, Intrepid for two. Well, four, I guess, but you know what I mean, the extra two. Okay. Okay, nice draw. Nice draw. We're getting uh short end of this stick for sure. They were on the draw, uh sorry, on the play as well. On the play with two forms of exile. I bet they've got a third. I bet they've got a third. The life gain is nice, and it will get out of control, but I'm worried about just any more, any more exile. Like, we need to pull our Skyclaves. Skyclave their Cathar, take our Adeline back, and then, you know, just get another Skyclave on their Skyclave, I guess. We have a 4% chance to draw a single Skyclave, so drawing two of them is definitely viable. That math works, right? Um, yeah, I've never seen a mono white player play so slow. Maybe the kids are yelling at him. Dad, I spilled my yogurt. I'll take the win. They definitely have the advantage here. Oh, they're back. They're back. They're back. They're back. They're back. They're back. They just wanted us to scoop. They wanted us to scoop. That's a very strange attack. Oh, but they want nighttime. I see. So let's do our best to make sure they can't double cast. And now I can't double cast. Another Faceless Haven. That's great. That puts them to four. I imagine there's just a single drop, whether it be the Intrepid or the Luminarch. Yeah. But now they don't, like, they won't be double casting now, unless they draw one drop. But they can hit for four. And seven. Down to nine. Land out with a single cast, but a double pump. Hit for five. Maybe we can outpace with the life gain. I don't know. We need to remove this brute. They're oopsing us. Oh, good game. Nice BM, bro. Nice BM. That was like a knife right through the ribs. What do you mean? Oops. Oh. <laughs> but how would I know that they have a, a portable hole, right? Going first against an actual duck. What the duck? 
that's pretty good humor, right? I like Thalia first, just in case they've got any shenanigans. Because they can easily deal with the Luminarch, now it's harder to deal with Thalia. The Rhymewood falls into another, which is tapped, that's fine. I wish I had Redain here to tax their lands too. That would be fun. Luminarch, Thalia, hit for two. Uh, sorry, three. Math is so hard, you guys. Just look the pictures. It's fun. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, taking the token. Without any shame. Just gimme, 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 gimme. Spread the value. Hitting for five. Down to twelve. So they're still taxed by one. So they can play a three drop. Wandrix, Cultivator is a creature. Four drop, draws a land, untapped. They can't do anything with it because we're taxing for one. You're a little late. You're a little late! But I'm going to do it anyways to tax their next land. And then it's just, you know, first strike city. Hitting for four down to eight. There is a block, which is... The thing opens up our attack lanes for next turn. Land and play tapped. Gotcha. This is an, a, a unique deck, an original deck, so I'm happy to see it. Um, double taxed here on four or more. Good game. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. I know, bro. I'm so sorry. We should add a line there, probably. Got him. And I think, yeah, we didn't even move rank. LOL. <laughs> Alrighty then. On the draw, but the hand is pretty cool. We've got a top 35 player. This is someone who takes their job very seriously. Okay, that's not great. I don't want to get cinderclasmed. Whatever, it's just two creatures. It could even be a Wari's Disruption. But I guarantee it's a Cinderclasm right here. Whoosh, wipe the whole field. No? Interesting. Hmm. I didn't expect any of that. <laughs> like, okay, this is getting countered or we're losing the entire field, right? Always worst case scenario with this guy. Yeah, you tap out. You tap out, I dare you. Expressive iteration. Looking at the top three. One into hand, one into the bottom of the library, and one into exile to play for the duration of the turn. One into hand, one into the bottom of library, one into exile to play for the turn, also being exiled because they can't play it. And uh, do they, they do have a land. And we will tap some stuff here. Redain's more important to us than the Luminarch. So we make sure it has Indestructible as well as an option. And then we're in with the Binder. And another Escort. And then we can protect them both. What you doing, Luna? I know you're good at this game. Another expressive iteration. Interesting. So they can two drop on us. Or um one drop as well, I guess. Play an island fading hope. Play any lands. Deal what three to four damage. Ooh. I don't like this deck. It's hard to play against. They're really thinking this through, which is also makes me a little nervous. 
Juarez comes in tapped. Redain to a 4 5. Down to 9. Binder in play. What you got, Willis? Wow. Nice. Oh, and look at the rank gain there. Grabbing a little of their MMR from them. <laughs> They'll take that, please. What did we have? We were going to take, I think, the divide by zero was our go-to grab. And then, you know, Counterspell, Counterspell is doing nothing. You know, what are they going to do? Unexpected Windfall. Nice. I mean, not a great hand for them, but uh, it's just such a good deck. It's such a pleasure to beat. All right, so not only is the queue time a bit of a problem, but the, uh, you know, the player number of individual... It's the same problem, and now we've just rematched, and they have an inherent advantage over us. Because they know what we're playing, and we can use that advantage as well, maybe. It's a good turn. Two, and we're on the play, so maybe this works out. Do they just bounce it here? What's going on? They foretell, which is so good for us. Because we know there's no interaction. We hit for two. This is as good as it gets. We have three elite spellbinders. into their hands. Now this is where it gets risky. We take the divide. Because burn down the house is being taxed so hard. It's more damage with Usher, but I think we should still get in there. And we'll still take the houses. Because I don't think we need the extra damage. I think we're fine. Because we have lethal next turn anyways. Back to back turns wins. That was ice. That was so good for us. That was so good. Not enough rank. Not enough rank for that kind of that kind of win. But uh, on the play, Thalia Redain against is it turns. Oh, God bless. God bless. <laughs> All right. So I know a lot of people are like, oh well, mono white is terrible. Uh, you know what's more terrible? Prismari turns. Uh, I cannot stand how oppressive that deck is to the rest of the meta. I feel like other decks could beat Mono White if Turns wasn't around because there's so many people playing Turns and it shuts down literally every single other mid-range deck almost. Um, and it's these aggressive mid-range decks that would beat Mono White, right? The big creatures with the lots of removal, uh, that would get Mono White scared. But we don't see those decks because Prismari Turns just is strictly better than when those two match up. So it's hard uh, to run anything else other than Mono White to match up within the meta favorably. That doesn't mean to say that I want to play Mono White forever. Of course, uh, I used to push with Gruul, I used to push with Mono Red, really whatever we were playing. Uh, at the time, but recently I feel as if it is uh, fairly constricted to uh, a couple decks, right? It's not too, um, you know, diverse. And because of this, I'm willing to uh, accept the lesser of two evils. In my opinion, it is, I would like to know, honestly, what do you guys think? Is Prismari turns uh, worse or is Mono White worse? To me, the turns is worse um, because lots of decks should be able to beat Mono White, but they don't get a chance to be played.
just my personal opinion. Anyways, what did you guys think of the deck? Let me know in the comments below, stuff like that. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join our community Discord, available within the link tree link. And if you haven't yet, I mean, definitely download uh, MTG Arena Assistant. Take control, learn your stats, your collection. You get, you know, some cool content and news. Stay up to date, it's in the loop, whatever, right? <laughs> Have a magical day, you guys. Enjoy, and we'll see you soon in the next.